Hallelujah. Good afternoon. God bless you. Folks, I just really feel this in my spirit to share this with you all. And I imagine there's some folks out there that need to hear this. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Now that may seem, that may seem very simple to you. Uh, but when you look at the other side of never failing, the other side of that is failing. Jesus never fails. Amen? Uh, I know this to be true in my own uh, experience, in my own life. Uh, I can honestly attest and I can tell you right now that Jesus Christ never fails. Now I can tell you by my own experience that man will fail you. Okay? That's the simple truth. Man will fail you. Um, I've had many that have failed me. But Jesus Christ has never failed me. And I, I do believe that God allows these things, allows us to look to man, uh, to put our trust in man, to teach us this lesson, the frailty of humanity. Uh, I remember one day the Lord spoke to me when I was complaining to the Lord about my own pastor. And the Lord spoke to my spirit and he said, he's just a man. That's the simple truth, folks. Now that is probably a striking uh, observation or uh, revelation to some of you. Uh, because a lot of times we think that if he's a minister, if he's God's servant, then he can't fail. But the truth is, like Elijah, we are all men of like passion. We are all subject to failure. Amen? Now, you find a man that doesn't fail, you find a man that has totally, completely died to self. And uh, Jesus Christ now has taken up his residence in that vessel. I don't know anybody like that at this point. But that's the ultimate. That's what God has promised, that we can be like Jesus. Amen? Don't make excuses when you fail people that, oh, well, that's just me because I'm just human. No. God has made a way for us to not fail. And I do believe, as ministers of the gospel, we are failing this generation right now. I believe that. I believe we're failing the United States of America. I believe that we are failing our brothers and sisters I believe we are failing ourselves. Amen? We are falling short of God's glory. And that's not because that the Lord doesn't have what we need, folks. It's because we're not understanding our need. We see in the book of Revelation, it says, now this is Jesus speaking, you say you're rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. So this is the church age, the people that say, oh, I don't need anything, I'm rich, I'm increased with goods, I have need of nothing. But yet Jesus says, you're wretched, you're poor, you're blind, you're miserable, and you're naked. Amen? Can we admit, can we admit it? Can we individually, collectively admit to the Lord that we have failed him. We have failed him. It's not the Lord that's failing. It's not God that's failing. You and I are failing. Failing what, Brother Joseph? Failing to take God at his word. We are failing to take God at his word. Amen? 
When Peter was sinking because he took his eyes off Jesus, he failed because he took his eyes off Jesus. Jesus didn't fail. Amen? Peter failed because he took his eyes off the answer. He took his eyes off the only one that could cause him not to fail, to keep him from failing. Amen? Folks, there is no failure in Jesus Christ. I believe that. I believe that. That's not just something I'm saying. I believe that. But that doesn't do me any good if I don't put my trust in He who cannot fail. I'm going to continually fail until I put my trust in He who cannot fail. As long as I lean to my own understanding or I lean upon the arm of flesh, as long as I'm looking to man, I'm going to fail. Cursed is the man that puts his trust in man. If you're disappointed today, it's because you've put your trust in something other than an unfailing God. He cannot fail. Every one of us would become better people if we could just get that in our spirit that Jesus Christ never fails. Amen? Put our trust in Him who cannot fail. Now that doesn't mean that you have some kind of trust outside of the trust that God can put in you. No, the world cannot put their trust in God. Every man must be given a measure of faith. You cannot come to Jesus Christ on your own. You and I weren't looking for Jesus. He came looking for us. And He gave to us a measure of faith so that we could put our trust in Him, so that we could look to Him. The world today does not have that measure of faith. They need it, And unless they get that measure of faith, they cannot put their trust in Jesus. It's you and I that must give them that measure of faith. We must be faithful that God can use us to plant seed, good seed. Amen? That we may be one of those in this hour the Lord could use to plant seed or water seed. Amen? The world around us needs that measure of faith. Praise God. We all need more faith. A measure of faith just gets us started. But we must go on unto the fullness. The fullness of faith. Full of faith. Faith full. Amen? Folks, if we could just pour out our hearts of all our failures today, of all our disappointments, And let the Lord replace that failure with Himself. With His own nature. With His own divine nature. Replacing it with His own character, His own nature. He could make us that we'll never fail. Amen? He's able to present us before His throne with exceeding joy, without fault. Without failure. He is able to make us people. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He is able to make us like unto himself. He's able to make us free. Free from failure. Amen. Free from self. Free from disappointments. Hallelujah. He is able to deliver us. He is able to to do what He has promised. But we're failing to take Him at His word. We're failing He who cannot fail. He is the measuring stick. He is the one we measure our lives to. We do not compare ourselves one with another. We do not measure ourselves according to one another. We measure ourselves to Christ. Amen? And when you measure yourself with the Lord, you'll find you come short of His glory. You'll see that you are a failure. And you'll continually be a failure until He makes you an overcomer. The Lord wants to make you and I overcomers. We scratch our heads and we say, Jesus, I don't know how you can take a person like me and make me an overcomer. 
I don't know how you can make me a victor. How you can make me a warrior. How can you make me, Jesus, to triumph over my problems, over my weaknesses, over my failures? How can you, Jesus, help me to forget my failures? How can you help me to forget the past and leave the past in the past? He can do it, friend. Paul learned the secret. Forgetting those things which are behind. Paul didn't say, this is something I do. Paul said, this is the one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This one thing I do. Paul, you only do one thing? I forget those things which are behind. And I press toward the mark. Friends, listen to what Brother Joseph's telling you today. You can't change your past. You can't change the past. You can't change what you have done wrong. You can't change your failures. You can't turn failures into successes. But you can forget it and leave it behind, amen, and let God make you an overcomer. He can make you to triumph over your own uh, failures. God can do that, friend. Look what he did with Simon Peter. Simon Peter denied that he even knew Jesus. But Simon Peter, amen, he triumphed over his own failure. We see Judas could have triumphed over his failure, but he didn't. He failed. He failed so badly that he couldn't even forgive himself and he couldn't go to Jesus for forgiveness. Don't ever allow failure to take you to suicide. Do not ever allow failure to to take you to the place where you cannot look up, where you cannot look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Do not ever allow failure to crush you to the point where you have no hope, where you can't look unto Jesus because he's your only hope. He's the only one that can make you not a failure. He's the only one that can take your disappointments, take your failures and make them go away and cast them into the sea of his forgetfulness as if it never happened. Amen? We see that Peter cut a man's ear off. That was a failure. But Jesus took that man's ear and put it back on him. Amen? No surgical, no surgeons were required. Amen? They didn't need a hospital. They didn't need a thread and a needle. Amen. Jesus Christ simply took that ear and placed it upon his face and made him whole. And if you, if you would have looked at that man, you never could have found a scar. You would not have found any blood. You would not have found anything. Are you listening? Because when the Lord does it, it's a miracle. Did you know Jesus Christ cannot fail? Did you know he still works miracles today? Did you know that he can take that which is absolutely impossible and do the impossible? That's right. If your marriage today is failing, if your relationship is failing, if your family is failing, if your children, if everything seems to be failing today, Jesus Christ can touch that. He can make that to work. Only Jesus can do it. I know that this is a generation of much failure today. We have someone uh, right now that's saying, running for uh, president, saying America doesn't win anymore. America just doesn't win anymore. All he does is focus on the failure. All he does is focus on the negative. He doesn't focus on the positive. But his whole thing is, look at me. I'm the one that's going to make America great again. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Trump, you can't make America great again. There's no man on the earth that can make America great again. Only Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, can make America great again. Only Jesus Christ can make America to be feared by the other nations again. Only Jesus Christ, if we'll do it His way, Mr. Trump, if we'll follow Jesus, if we'll take up our crosses and follow Jesus, if we'll deny ourselves, if we 
will put the Ten Commandments back where they belong. If we'll put prayer back in the schools, we'll turn this thing around and we'll be feared by all the nations. Once again, God can do it, friend. God can bring revival to America. If America will repent, if the church, which is called by his name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. The Lord doesn't want to see America destroyed. Uh, God does not want to see the United States of America fail. He wants it to triumph. He wants it to uh, be victorious. He wants America to overcome. But it's only going to be done through Him, through Jesus. Amen? Don't be like those today, like Donald Trump, that are just looking at the problem and thinking that you're the answer. You and I are not the answer. We see much failure around us, but we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. We got to keep our eyes on the one that does not fail. We've got to be those in this hour that never take our eyes off of Jesus. Amen. Don't be like Peter. Get your eyes off Jesus. Learn from his mistake. Learn from his failure. Learn from other people's failures. Don't do what they did. Don't follow people that are failing. Don't listen to people that fail. Amen? They talk about Donald Trump and how he has failed and failed so many businesses have failed. Amen? The only thing that has not failed, and actually it did fail, it went bankrupt. What he's living on right now went bankrupt. And they called him, they called it too big to fail. Donald Trump, too big to fail. Be careful there, Mr. Trump, because they said the Titanic couldn't go down. Look, our trust cannot be in a man. Donald Trump's not going to save us. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Jesus Christ is the only one that can deliver. He's the only one that can help us now. There's nobody else that can help us. We need Jesus. It's amazing to me. You have Mr. Carson and you have others that love Jesus that are running for president, but nobody has any interest in them. But yet they've got interest in a man that thinks he is the Christ. He thinks he's the answer to America. He thinks he doesn't have to pray. Well, I don't have to pray because I'm God. He thinks he's God. Listen, folks, Donald Trump's not God. Donald Trump's not the one that never fails. He thinks he is. He thinks that he's a winner and America's a failure. He thinks he's a winner. Friends, he's not a winner. Jesus Christ is the winner. And Jesus wants you to be a winner. Even though America may fail, you and I don't need to. We don't need to fail with everybody else failing. We don't need to be overcome like everybody else that's being overcome. We can conquer in this hour. We can be more than conquerors in this hour. Amen. Not only overcome, but we can take some spoil with us. We can take some spoil from the enemy's camp. We can take some souls with us. Amen. We can take some prisoners of war with us. Amen. And we can bring them to heaven with us. Amen. We don't need to let the devil defeat us and be defeated anymore. We need to rise up and be the army that the Lord uh, would have us to be. To be overcomers to be warriors, to be those in this hour that are shining, hallelujah, with the glory of God. The world would take notice that there's a God in heaven that still answers prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus never fails. If you fail, friend, it's because you did not put your trust in Jesus. It's because you did not invest everything you had in Jesus. Everything's going to fail. The banks are going to fail. Everything's going to fail before it's over. But he who puts his trust in the Lord shall be delivered. God bless you.